Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and welcome to episode 21 of Direwolf20's Let's Play series. I am just hanging out in my Thalmcraft room, doing a little bit of research, and it's time to start getting aura nodes a little bit easier to manage. And for that, we need this research right here that I just got. Node in a jar. Node in a jar is a perfect node movement mechanic. It's basically pretty simple. All you have to do is uh, take some glass, surround an aura node with a whole bunch of glass, put some uh, slabs of wood on top, and then whack it with a wand with about 70 of each of these types of aspect. So it's pretty expensive to be able to do this in terms of aspect use. But once you do so, that node will be trapped inside of a jar of glass and shrunk down, and then you'll be able to transport it. Let's take a look at what's involved. It's pretty easy. So first off, because this is such an expensive mechanic, I want to make sure I have my full uh, robe here of gear set up. And as a matter of fact, I might want to take um, all my other stuff with me. So I'll actually put this stuff back on and just bring this with me for when I actually do the, um, the actual act of moving the aura node. So let's go find one that we want to grab. Uh, I do have a wand full of, almost full actually. Uh, I'm a little bit low on the fire aspect, but you can see I've got 100 V of each type. Now I've also got a nice discount of V85% cost. So it's already going to be less than 70, but once I have all this stuff on i mean we're going to be down a good amount so uh you know hopefully we'll uh, only wind up costing like 60 something ish i would think maybe even closer to 50 we'll have to see um so it looks like it's dark outside so maybe i should do a real quick sleep through the night mechanic here there we go and there's something i like to do um when i'm doing my node movement is i kind of want to make sure that i have a nice balance in terms of how much um or how many different aura nodes i capture and i also tend to like to grab aura nodes that are multi-purpose so some aura nodes have like a lot of one aspect whereas other aura nodes will have um some of um a, a couple different aspects uh, I think the most I've ever really seen is like three of the primals and sometimes there's even an extra there so if we take a look at this one we can see that there's earth fire and air on this guy and he's also got some of this darkness aspect which we can actually use believe it or not so this might not be a bad one to grab um, so since we're right here and we can probably grab it let's go ahead and clear out the space all around this node so like I said you need to have um, this thing encased in uh, glass oh I probably should have brought a little bit of water with me but yeah we'll see uh, there we go, one, right like so, we'll be alright, I'll manage. And then we want some glass on this side, just like that, okay? Uh, we got the glass over around here and here, and now that aura node is inside this uh, glass contraption. So completely surrounded by glass, like that, okay? And since I happen to be right next to a tree, I shouldn't have a problem getting this stuff. And I'll just do a crafting table on the ground thing. There we go. Now I've got enough slabs to cover the top. Now there's only one kind of downside to this, and I'll show you in a moment. It's uh, not completely common, but uh, it does happen. I'd say maybe close to 50% of the time. It's supposed to be less, but in my experience, it's been around 50%. Uh, I may be just unlucky. Uh, when I actually activate this, and you'll notice that there's probably not many aspects in there. That's because I just came by and drained this thing from my wand. But like I told you guys, it, it constantly regenerates its aspects. So we shouldn't have to worry about it too much. Right click, and ta-da! We've got a node in a jar. So you can see it's already regened some of its aspects, which is cool. And then we can pick that jar up. Now you can see that it's now a normal pale node so it's actually gone ahead and um gotten a little bit weaker is what happened and there we go so it looks like we used about 56 um so that's not too bad actually let's get our flight mechanic back and head back home cool so what does a pale node do? Well, pale nodes basically just regenerate their aspects a little bit slower than normal nodes. And basically every time you encapsulate a node in a jar, it has a chance to weaken a little bit. It's not a 100% chance, it's just occasional, um, but it can happen. So just be aware of that. You can weaken the node and make it regenerate its aspects a little bit slower than it would have otherwise, okay? So let's keep that in mind. All right, so while uh, I've got this, what are we gonna do with it? Well, I've kind of mapped out an area here for all these nodes to kind of sit in and hang out. I figure it would be not too bad to have it sitting right next to our arcane um, infusion table thing here. So um, 
there's a block that we can get in Thongraph, and I'm not quite sure if I've researched it yet or not. I think it's under Artifice or Thaumaturgy. There it is, the Wand Recharge Pedestal. Cool. This guy is a little bit expensive um, in that it requires 10 of that Aurum aspect, so I'm going to need uh, about five more of those things. Is that how many I have in here? I do. Perfect. That's exactly how many I have. That's awesome. Um, and then some Permutatio and Magic. Um, it's going to need a gold and a couple pieces of diamond, so we might actually make this because it looks like we have pretty much everything we need. That's pretty cool. Um, and what you can do is actually use it to automatically recharge your wands for you. Um, basically what you do is you place it near any um, aura nodes, and we'll take a look at it in a minute to get it to recharge our wands. So what I've done is mapped out an area here so that we can uh, place down our aura node, like so, and then right click it with a wand. And it'll break that uh, glass around it, and now the aura node is sitting right here in our little Thaumcraft room. Really nice, right? Now here's another tip. Remember, you have to completely encase this thing in glass if you ever want to move it again. So I don't recommend placing your aura nodes right next to each other. Because if you do that, you won't be able to move them. Because, you know, if you had an aura node here and an aura node here and an aura node here, you wouldn't be able to encapsulate any of these three in glass completely because, you know, they'd be obstructing each other. You'd probably have to break this one and destroy it. And then you'd be able to surround that one with glass and that one with glass. So that's just a recommendation. If you guys are positive that this is where you're going to have your aura nodes and you don't care if they're not touching each other, each other and whatever you're never going to move them again by all means you can place them right next to each other that's fine but if you ever have a chance of possibly move, moving them in the future i recommend you know not doing that now of course it's not like you can't go find other aura nodes either so yeah it's up to you if you really want to be careful about it all right so i've got that guy made let's go get the stuff we need for um the the stuff we want to make so i'm going to go over here real quick and Let's see, Thalmanomicon. What did we need here? So I needed a hopper. I'm going to get a couple of those, a few diamonds, and some gold ingots. That looks pretty easy, actually. I'm going to make sure to get two hoppers just in case, because remember I told you it's a, occasionally possible that uh, we can have problems here. So we'll get 10 of you. Um, we'll get two of you just to be safe. And I'll get like six diamonds just to be safe. That should be good. All my stuff should be coming my way. Awesome. Two hoppers, some diamonds, some gold, and then I need an arcane pedestal, which I think I've got an extra one back at the place. Uh, now, also I need Aurum, which I shouldn't have a problem having. I've already got some Aurum. What else did I need? Percantio and Permutatio. Uh, what's a good source of Permutatio, you're probably asking? Let's take a look. Permutatio, um, looks like cotton seeds, copper. Copper is a good source of Permutatio. I should have a good amount of that stuff. Um, copper. So I get one per. All right, so if I were to get, let's get, well, I don't want to like burn through a ton of copper, so 20 should be good. And then uh, we'll want some uh, wood, some of the, you know what, it's back at the Thaumcraft room, so that's cool. So let's get over here and start cooking up the aspects in the jars that we need to make this wand recharge pedestal. So I'm gonna want you, and we needed some um, Percantio. How much Percantio exactly? Um, Wand recharge pedestal, 15 per cantio. All right, well, let's just get um, a little bit extra. Sure, 20, why not? Never hurts to have a little bit extra of this stuff in here. Oh, no, I didn't want you guys to go in there. Come back, you. Uh, I want this, this, and the copper. Cool. So you'll cook up your stuff, and then while that's happening, I'll make sure to get this thing ready. I think, like I said, I had an extra arcane pedestal. Remember when I was making these, I made an extra one uh, because of the way the crafting recipe works. Uh, we need four diamonds. One, two, three, four. And we needed a gold ingot and a hopper. Cool. Now, I don't think it really matters if I'm wearing my Thaumaturgist robe or stuff yet um, at this point. I'm pretty sure it doesn't actually cost any V from your wand, and it won't give you any benefits in infusion crafting, as far as I know. But, hey, I'm being a wizard, so I might as well dress the part. All right. So, we should have um, some coppers getting cooked up. We still have to wait for the great wood log to burn down a little bit. Um, let's see. You're doing your thing. Water jar, you've got a little bit of magic in there, but we need some more. Now, there is a way to speed this up a little bit if we wanted to. We could use Alimentum in here, and it would kind of increase the speed at which this thing, um, you know, cooks down its stuff. Um, I'm wondering if that's in the notes here. Uh, 
raw stuff, let's see. There you go, it says it right here. If the alchemical furnace is being powered by alimentum, this distillation process is much faster. Cool. All right, looks like I've got 15 Percantio, 15 Permutatio, and I've got the 10 um, Aurum that we need. Let's do it, shall we? Do your thing, guys. Cool. Filling up the Aurum. Next should come uh, the Percantio. There it goes. Cool. Finally, some Permutatio. And then here come the items. And this is the point where the items might get knocked off or zapped off at something. They can actually get zapped off at any point. They might either just be knocked off the pedestal or they might be um, destroyed altogether, which is why you want to make sure to always bring an extra item or two of each type just in case they do get destroyed. What will happen is if the item is lost and then the items are missing from the pedestal, it'll start drawing extra um, aspects from the jars and it'll eventually become more and more unstable and all kinds of bad things happen. Trust me, you don't want any part of it. All right, so now that that worked, we can put away some of this junk. Go away, all of you guys. Cool. And you too. And I can put my gear back on. So let's give it a try, shall we? Uh, simply place your wand recharge pedestal here, and uh, it'll draw um, from nearby nodes. Pretty decent range, too. Just right click, and you can see uh, it recharging from that node. That node is getting drained of its aspects uh, to the best of its abilities. Nice, right? Very cool. However, there's an upgrade we can apply, because see how there's that extra little aspect there? Let's take a look. And for that, we're going to want this guy right here. Compound Recharge Focus. Now, this thing's a little bit more expensive. Uh, you're going to need four emeralds. You're going to need uh, four V filters, which we uh, have seen crafted before. We're going to need some Ordo, Permutatio, and Percantio. See? I knew we were going to need a little bit extra of that stuff. Um, glad I got a little bit extra then. Let's throw some of you in. And how much... Left over this, do we have only five? All right, we're gonna definitely need some more copper. Uh, this should be enough Percantio for us, definitely. Uh, a little bit more copper and some Ordo. How are we for that? Uh, we've only got one Ordo. What's up, Spider? I should really build that door that I've been saying I'm gonna build for a while. Yeah, we've got a lot of uh, iron aspect, but not quite much Ordo. So that's all right, we'll get some metal, we'll get some Ordo, um, and I'll get the items I need. And then I'll be right back to show you guys how this gadget works. And remember guys, always scan the stuff that you make because there's tons of research points on it. All right, so uh, we wanted to get some of you and some of you. There we go. Wand goes in, make me a V filter or five, please. An extra one, remember. Always make an extra. Trust me, it would really hurt if one of the B filters got destroyed during this creation process. Um, and then what was the item that goes in the center? Oh yeah, that redstone thingy. I'll get one of those. A comparator, I think it was, or something like that. Uh, comparator. Yep. Okay. All right. Just double checking that I've got everything I need here. Uh, we've got the items in place. 10, 10, and 15. Uh, we've got 20, 17, and 25. Good enough for me. All right, let's get this thing made. Now this thing I think has, uh, what's the chance of problems? Moderate, so we may not have a problem. Ow. Okay, so that was a little bit of a flux uh, event there, getting damaged. Happens now and then. That's the least of your worries, I promise you. All right, so the last of that stuff going in, and then the emeralds and the flux filters, or the V filters. Not so bad. So far, so good. So this is kind of an optional upgrade. You don't really need to put this on there, but if you have a lot of aura nodes that have um, those compound aspects on it, it's really going to help you out. And I'll show you why. Because what it does is it fills your wand using those compound aspects. It's really the only use um, in Thaumcraft right now of the compound aspects being inside aura nodes. It is the ability to plop a wand recharge, um, compound recharge focus on there, and then watch the compound aspect. What it does is it breaks that compound aspect down into its component parts, chooses one of the primal aspects that make it up, and uses that to refill the wand. Okay, so let's see what we got here. So it looks like I got a little bit of, uh, I don't know, I'm not sure what I got from that. I got something. Um, let's see, I might have gotten probably air. Is air a component of the uh, darkness? Let's see. So if we take a look here, remember compound aspects are made up of two. So uh, if we look at the Tenebrae, it's vacuous and lux. And then if we look at lux, that breaks down to air and ignis. 
So I might have gotten air. I might have gotten Ignis. It looks like I got air, though, because I have a lot of it in my wand at the moment. So air and Ignis is a potential from this. Um, and then uh, what else do we get from Nebra? Vacuous, which is air and Perdito. So air, Ignis, or Perdito, any of those three primals could have been charged using that compound um, guy in there. So that's pretty neat. So what I'm going to do is fly around a little bit, get a few more... Um, aura nodes down here. Now one thing I do like to do is take note of which ones I've already got. So um, I keep like a little chart of, uh, and I say like, all right, I got one water, I got one fire, I got one air. So the next thing I want to find is something with Perdito, Order, and Earth. That would probably be a great combination. So let's see, do we have anything out there? Perdito, Order, and Earth. Look at that. Nice. Let's go fly up to that guy and get him. Better grab some wood and some more glass. Oh, and I should probably recharge my wand a little bit too. So there we are, I found that node um, for Dito, Order, and Earth. It's got a decent amount of aspects in it, and it's got an extra Valito, which is really cool. Um, so, oh, derpy me, I uh, forgot to actually convert my wood into wood planks. Let's take care of that real quick. There we go. All right, now we've got to surround this guy in glass. And there. So now because I've got this awesome thing with some extra stuff in it, um, I'm really excited because it'll make it even easier to recharge my wand. Let's hope I didn't get a weakened one again. Yep, see, it went down to pale. So when you got pale, eh, again, it's not the end of the world, but it just is kind of like, oh man. All right, meet you guys back at the base. All right, so I've got myself this nifty node in a jar with some extra stuff. Let's go ahead and toss it down here and break. And you can see I actually flew around a little bit and recharged my aspects a little bit while I was out in the field, kind of on the way back. I made sure to stop at a couple aura nodes. Let's recharge this wand, shall we? Nice. So we can see we're uh, using the um, Volito here to refill the air aspect, which is pretty cool. Nice. So I'm almost ready to grab another uh, another node. But I think you guys have seen enough of this. So what I'll probably do uh, for a little bit here is let these nodes recharge. I'll grab them, and mostly you'll see me kind of doing this off camera. Now, uh, because I've already grabbed these nodes, I'm going to go ahead and just break the little... Um, pedestals underneath that I was using as kind of marker points for where I'm going to place them. And eventually I'd like to have a total of, uh, I guess, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, eight of these in here would be cool. And if I really wanted to, um, I could have another pedestal and then another node up here. So I could eventually have, um, you know, double that if I really wanted to grab some more. So that's wand relocation uh, with uh, moving nodes around. It's really kind of like once you've got this set up and you've got yourself a bunch of nodes that you can recharge your wand with, Thalmcraft opens up a lot more because you don't have to constantly travel around to recharge your wands. It's something you should really focus on doing. But again, because it requires, um, you know, in best case scenario, 50 some V from your wand, you're going to want to make sure to have probably a, a silverwood wand, and you'll probably want to make sure you have the full set of uh, goggles of revealing and thaumaturgic gear. Cool. So now that we've been playing around with all this magical cool stuff, let's put it to work and actually make it get something for us that we need at this point. I've been manually um, harvesting wheat and seeds and filling up this little machine right over here uh, with wheat and seeds to help breed my stuff so I can get my food, right? What if we wanted to automate that and what if we wanted to use Thalmcraft to do it? Well, for that, then we would probably want to look at Gollomancy. Gollomancy can be used to automate all kinds of cool stuff um, and Thalmcraft stuff not exclusive. Uh, you can do stuff like uh, harvesting plants, chopping down trees, um, and doing all kinds of stuff, moving items from one inventory to another. What we're going to do is we're going to set up a basic Gollum system that will harvest our plants for us and pick up the items they drop and deposit them in a nearby chest. How's that sound? Pretty cool? All right, so let's get started. Uh, now, there's different types of golems you can get. And you can see I haven't fully exhausted the golemancy tree. There's still some stuff to do. Um, but basically, the stronger the golems, they have different traits. So straw golems, for example, um, have a very low durability and strength. So they're not going to be very useful if you want to make golems that can attack other entities like you can do. Um, but uh, they can, you know, have a little bit of an average self-repair, but they can only carry one item at a time. Luckily, though, they're pretty quick to move around because they're so light being made of straw, and they can only accept one upgrade. 
Okay, uh, whereas wood golems here are a little bit better. Um, you know, they have below average durability and low strength, uh, but they can carry four items at a time. And they have above average speed and one upgrade available as well. Uh, you can also get flesh golems, which are pretty much equivalent to wood golems, but are allowed two upgrades. But I don't think we need to worry about upgrades too much because of what we're going to be making. But keep in mind, if you want to do something really crazy with golems, you are going to want as many upgrades as possible. Um, upgrades uh, give you different things, like the air upgrade lets your golem run faster. Um, whereas the water golem uh, upgrade allows you to uh, have your golem see things further away and interact with them. So most golems have a range of about 16 blocks around their home location. Um, but, uh, you know, if you put the perceptive upgrade on there, they can get further away than that. Pretty neat. Um, and we're also going to take a look at the order upgrade here, um, which kind of makes them a little bit more intelligent and lets them have better control. And you'll find that some upgrades are very specifically useful with certain golem cores. Golem cores are what determine what the golem is going to do. So for example, if we make a straw golem and we give it the gather golem core, it'll uh, pick up any items nearby. If we give it the harvest golem core, it'll harvest any plants nearby. All right, so let's take a look at this. So first off, I'd like to make one of each. I want to make a straw golem, okay? And for that, we're going to need to use the crucible. We need to get some humanus, modus, and spiritus, okay? Drop that all into the crucible, and then as a catalyst, we want to throw in a hay bale. Then we're also going to want to get wooden golem, which is, again, humanus, modus, and spiritus, and we're going to want to drop a great wood log in there, okay? So let's take a look at doing both of those. So let's do it, shall we? Uh, we need four Humanus, which you can get from Rotten Flesh, good source of Humanus. Uh, we're going to need four Spiritus, which you can get from Soul Sand or Zombie Heads. I didn't happen to have any Soul Sand laying around, but I did have some extra Zombie Heads, so I made sure to grab those. And then finally, uh, Trap Doors are a good source of Modus. And then just drop in your Hay Bale, and you should get yourself a Straw Golem. Now, one downside to using a Crucible and not being very specific with your aspects is that once they've been sitting in there for a while in the Crucible, they're going to start breaking down into their component aspects, and then eventually leak out into the environment as a form of Taint. And Taint can start having negative effects in the world around you. So you can see there, something just broke down uh, into the, into the victim this life force and all that stuff. Now if you want, it's probably a good idea to uh, empty out the contents of your crucible before doing another um, little thing here. Let's see, I should have a bucket laying around. So you could wait for this stuff to kind of slowly break itself down and leak out into the environment on its own. Uh, or you can uh, speed it up because you don't want to have too many aspects in your crucible because there is a limit to how many they can hold. So it's a good idea to clean out your crucible. Shift right click with a wand and it'll immediately dump everything out into the environment. Uh, so we did get a little bit of taint coming out of there. You're going to kind of want to break that up with a you know, piece of cobblestone, get rid of it. And it'll probably take care of itself. You might get a little bit of uh, taint poisoning and nausea. But yeah, you know, in the end it's... It's going to take care of itself. It'll be all right. And then we just need to refill this thing. And I wanted to get a wood one next. So for that, we're going to need a great wood log and the same combination of aspects again. So let's drop you, 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 and you. Ta-da! Wooden golem. Cool. Now we need to get ourselves um, some other cool stuff like the golem uh, cores because right now these guys are just going to sit there and do nothing. So we need to get ourselves some golem cores. Again, we're going to need to use the crucible. Um, let's see, golem and see. So I want to get a gathering core. Uh, so you need some blank animation cores first. You're going to need some bricks and some night tour. Okay, and that's in an arcane workbench recipe. And then you need to drop that blank animation core into a crucible to determine what type of core you'll get. For a uh, gather core, we need some Lucrum and some Terra. And for a harvest core, we need some Messus and Meto. All right, let me get that stuff ready. All right, so I should have everything I need here. So first off, let's get ourselves two sets of blank animation cores. And again, that needs the uh, wand in there. One, two, thank you guys very much. Cool. And then uh, we want to upgrade them to the type of core we want. So um, if we put, um, let's see, just want to double check everything before I do it because you don't want to waste your resources. Bad times ahead. Uh, so for gathering, we need Lucrum and Terra. Okay, so that's Earth and Gold are good sources of that stuff. And then you drop in a core, and you should get back the gather core. Awesome. And then uh, Shears are a good source of uh, Meto, so we'll throw them in. But remember, we should probably... Clear out the excess in there. And oh, we got some liquid taint. Watch out for that stuff, it's nasty. I always kind of destroy the source block as soon as it shows up. And then, uh, so we wanted the shears. And uh, what else did we have here? Uh, yeah, messes. Potatoes are a good source, or wheat, either one. 
and ta-da, harvest core. Now, here's the deal about the harvest cores. Um, they're not particularly smart when they have them built in by default. Unfortunately, they're not smart enough to replant the crops they have harvested. So it'll pick up the wheat, but it won't replant the seeds. Unless you add a golem upgrade for order. Remember I told you the order upgrade tends to make them a little bit smarter uh, and allows you to do different things with your golems. This will allow them to replant the crop they just harvested. Cool. So let's make one of those. Uh, golem order upgrades are pretty easy to make. It's just uh, one of these aspect recipes and a little bit of order from your wand. Ta-da! Golem upgrade order. All the upgrades are the same. Um, it's the shard surrounded by the gold nuggets. Just determines what type of shard you want. All right. Uh, now there's one other thing that we should make, or at least consider making, and that would be the Golemancer's Bell. Now you're going to want to make this in an arcane workbench. I'm going to need a little bit of quartz. Golemancer's Bell is kind of like the wrench of thermal expansion or industrial craft or build craft, but for golems. So let's get ourselves a few pieces of quartz. And I know what you're probably thinking is Dyer's not using that Tesseract he set up last episode. I know, it's still, um, the, the pack hasn't been updated yet, and um, I just don't want to cause any crashes, so I'm just waiting for the update to occur. Occur. So don't yell at me for not using my Tesseract. I still have it disabled um, until it's, you know, kind of fixed within the pack for you guys. Cool. So the Golemancer's Bell, really easy to make, uh, just like so, and that allows a little bit more control on these guys. So let's get them to work, shall we? Uh, I'm going to want some kind of chest or something to store this stuff in, and eventually I might want to set up a piping system to fill up barrels or something. But for now, let's just get a basic uh, chest. Sure. Request one. Go. And it's going to go get me some wood and convert it all and do all that cool, fun stuff that we like to see. Come on, buddy. Don't waste my time now. Make me a chest. There we go. Just got it. All right, so let's set this up. I'm thinking... should have probably grabbed a little bit more dirt. I'd like to fill this area in a little bit more, I think. And a little bit of work with the builder's wand later, and we've got not a terrible little setup here. Cool. So that just kind of makes the area look a little bit nicer, I think, doesn't it? Yeah, that looks nice. So this is where we'll have our uh, little setup for our um, harvest golems, okay? So first off, the harvest golem himself needs to just kind of be placed almost anywhere. Um, a good way to um, probably set him up would probably be, um, well, let's try and get something like that. Yeah, he can kind of stand right in the center here of this whole area and survey it nicely. So I'll place him right there, okay? So he's pretty smart. Um, he's just going to run around and harvest the plants for us. But remember, we want to make sure that he um, replants them. So what I'm going to do first, before I put the harvest upgrade on him, is make sure he has the order upgrade. And when I apply it to him there, you can kind of sit it right there on his belt. And then uh, the golem animation core for harvest will go on, and he'll kind of wake up and be like, oh, I need to harvest stuff. And he'll start doing it. And you'll see he's automatically replanting things. Pretty cool, right? Now, for uh, this guy, I'm thinking I'm going to place my chest right about here, okay? Um, and like I said, we'll probably move stuff later. I'm going to place um, this guy here by right-clicking on the chest with him. And again, he doesn't know what to do until I tell him, which is the Golem Animation Core, for gathering. And then he's going to start going around and collecting all this stuff. Cool, right? Now, he'll collect the seeds, he'll collect the cotton, he'll collect the uh, potatoes, he'll collect the wheat. He'll kind of grab everything that's nearby and make sure to throw it in the chest. Remember, though, he can only carry four items at a time, which at this point probably seems like not much because we just cleared a whole terrain area of, um, you know, seeds and plants and stuff. But keep in mind, these things are going to grow slower. So um, going forward, we don't really need to carry much more than a couple items at a time. If you want them to be able to carry more, uh, you either have the option of crafting. I think it's the earth upgrade can allow him to carry more, or you can get a high higher tier golem like iron golems can carry like you know a bunch of stuff maybe 16 or maybe even 32 i forget so a uh, bunch of different options there one other thing i'd like to do um let's see before we wrap up here i want to make sure that my hoe is ready cool i don't think i really need much more by the way cotton do i uh because cotton's really only good for making string and wool and we can get string from wool and we have a farm for sheep so do i need cotton anymore probably not so let me clean all this stuff up i don't really need cotton i don't think so i'm going to get rid of this and i'm going to replace it with a wheat farm uh we're going to continue to just grow more and more wheat because basically the more wheat we have the more cows we can breed and the more steak we'll have and steak tastes better than bread so that's the way we're going to do it 
So how are we for seeds over here? Really not that many seeds? All right, that's fine. We'll get a few more shortly. So that looks pretty good. So now these guys are all automated. And anytime we have any growth here, uh, we should see that the golems will take care of everything for us. So let me clean up my inventory a little bit here, like so. These guys can go away, that's good for now. And I'll put my um, Builder's Wand away, and I'll put my Golemancer's Bell in my White um, Ender pack as well. Nice. So there we go, he just saw another growth. Uh, so he went over, replanted the seeds, he grabbed the wheat, and he put it in the chest. And if there were any extra seeds, he would have grabbed them as well. Now if you really want to be specific about it, you can also uh, configure these guys on what they should pick up. So you can say, uh, you know, do you want me to pick up something specific or pick up everything? I'm going to leave him to pick up everything, of course. Um, but if you wanted to, you could uh, increase the number of items that you can specify within one of the upgrades. I, uh, might, might be order, I think, actually increases that as well. Um, so there's a bunch of different options you can have. And I think, guys, that's a pretty good wrapping up point for the episode. So obviously a little bit of a mess made here uh, with the Thomcraft stuff. Be a little bit careful. I'm usually more sloppy than I should be with throwing aspects into this Crucible. Um, but if you can be really balanced with it, you can have far less of a chance for some of that negative flux um, stuff to occur. What I'm going to do between the next uh, episode and this one is probably grab a couple more of those um, aura nodes so that I can have them in my base. And it'll make it a lot easier. Once you've got two or three down there, um, you can recharge your wand whenever you want pretty much and it's a lot nicer. Cool. Uh, for now, though, this is Direwolf20 signing off. Hope you've enjoyed the episode, and take it easy!